that connections are laid down in the fetus in an early infancy. And once these connections are laid down, there's nothing you can do to change them. So far, Ramachandran's remapping idea was only a hypothesis. As a scientist, he knew that such a radical idea required scientific proof. It was time to take Derek to the Meg scanner. This would disclose what was actually going on in his brain. When various parts of Derek's body were wired up, the corresponding activity in his brain revealed the layout of his body map. This is an image of Derek's brain. The green spot in the left hemisphere corresponds to Derek's right hand, which is intact. Next to it, the red spot represents the right side of Derek's face. But in the right hemisphere, there is no green spot because Derek's left arm has been amputated. Instead, the red area corresponding to his left cheek has now expanded into the vacated green hand area. These results triumphantly confirmed Ramachandran's detective work. It's as though now the sensory input from the face is innervating a completely new part of the brain. And this means new pathways have been opened up. Whether this is because there's been an actual sprouting of new nerve fibers, or there have been pre-existing silent pathways which are now suddenly active. We suggested that maybe the connections are already there, like reserve troops ready to be called into action. And when you amputate the hand, these latent connections suddenly become active. Phantom sensations do not only occur in the limbs. But in fact, you can get a phantom with almost any part of the body. You can get phantom menstrual cramps after hysterectomy. You can get phantom appendix pain even after the appendix has been removed. Theoretically, you could have a phantom of almost any part of the body. Not today. Except, of course, the brain. You can't have a phantom brain by definition because that's where we think it's all happening. Wherever in the body a phantom is experienced, it almost invariably hurts. And this raises a serious clinical problem. How do you treat pain in a non-existent body part? Ramachandran may have come up with a solution, for phantom limbs at least. James has suffered phantom pain ever since he lost his hand six years ago. A few days after I woke up, you know, it might have been a week to uh, eight or nine days, something like that, before the pain really started getting bad, you know, to where it was like your hand is just crunched up real tight and stuff or balled up, you know, and you can't move it. To unclench, it's just you can't try in your mind or, and everything that to open it, to do anything to, to relieve the pain, and nothing works, you know. One answer might be that the brain is sending signals to the arm and trying to clench it, but in you and me, uh, there's messages going back from the muscles of the hand telling you you're clenching too much or too fast. And this damps the, the command signals so you can, you can slow down. But the patient has no feedback because he doesn't have an arm. So the brain says send even more signals, okay? And this goes on and you get into a sort of positive feedback loop. So I said, well, if you give him some, some other source of feedback, such as visual feedback, maybe that'll trick the brain into thinking that the hand is clenching or unclenching, and maybe you can interrupt this loop. So I said, well, why don't we put a mirror there and have James look inside the mirror? So it's as though you have visually resurrected the phantom limb. And of course, the patient knows it's an illusion, but it's very, very compelling. Right now, as you look in there and you move your hand, your phantom does the same thing as your left hand is doing. So right now my fingers are moving in the right hand and there's actually no right hand there. A phantom over which the patient had no control, suddenly as a result of the visual feedback, he's able to open it. First time I got in here and I've done this and it was just like, it relieved the phantom pain, done clenched it. You know, it was just, oh, so intriguing, you know. You, sometimes it's just it's hard to explain how you felt, you know. Ramachandran feels that the mirror box needs to be evaluated carefully with many patients before we can be sure that it really works. 
yet its undeniable success in uncramping James's phantom hand suggests that even pain can be a construct of the mind. Phantom limbs reveal how the brain can trick us into being aware of things that are not there. But sometimes the opposite can happen. We find ourselves responding to events without being aware that we're doing so, as if some alien mind were acting on our behalf. This zombie-like feature of the brain is dramatically revealed by a rare condition called blind sight, which enables you to see even though you are blind. Dr. Ramachandran grew up reading Sherlock Holmes, who remains an inspiration today. As a brain detective, he is always on the lookout for clues as to how the brain works. New information that might crack the mystery of consciousness. People said you have a grand overarching theory guiding this whole enterprise. I know very few scientists who do that. Science is much more opportunistic than people realize. You see something fascinating and you say, my God, what's going on here? And then you follow your nose and then there's all these unexpected twists and turns and nine out of ten turn out to be wild goose chases, a waste of time, but the tenth one turns out to be gold mine. Graham is one of the world's few known blindsight patients. He's blind, yet he can see. This paradoxical condition shows just how much our brains get on with running our lives without us even being aware of it. When I was eight, when I had the accident, it was a road accident that, that caused the brain damage, um, I literally used to walk into lampposts. Um, I ran into, you know, these huge great pillars that you get in stations? I ran into one of those one day. The road accident caused colossal damage to the main visual centers of Graham's brain. He can see to his left, but he is blind to everything on the right, in both eyes. If you put an object in that part of the field and ask him what is it, he has no idea. He cannot perceive it consciously. Down. And yet the remarkable thing is, if you move this object, he will tell you which direction it's moving. Right even though he cannot see the object. Up. Blind sight is this term introduced by Larry Weisskrantz to describe the ability of people like Graham to detect things but not to be aware of them. So very, very different from what we would normally call vision. Colin Blakemore is one of several Oxford scientists for whom Graham's mysterious abilities raise baffling questions about consciousness. I mean, blind sight is extraordinary when you, you see it. It's shocking. I think it's shocking because it brings home the fact that we can actually manage our brains without consciousness to some extent. And that leads to the question, well then, why not everything? Why not everything? And why do we need consciousness for certain things? What is the extra gloss that consciousness gives, if anything, mm -hmm. to our actions? For nearly 20 years, Graham has been the willing subject of a range of experiments that have yielded astonishing results. You can see things over here. Oh, yes, yes. I can see. I'm going to move that. my hand across. You tell me when it appears, when, you, when it, it comes into view. Now. Very precisely uh, as it enters the seeing part of your field. Now. And if I just hold it over here and you look there, you can't see anything? No. How about now? You're moving it up and down. But you're seeing it. It's very easy for me to say to you, oh, I saw that. Move up, Colin. Yeah. And as soon as I, I say that, you're going to say, ah, he can see. No, I can't. Okay, let's see if we can just test that a bit more formally. What I'm going to do is make uh, squares that appear on the screen and they will move either upwards, downwards or out to the right. You've got to keep looking at this point all the time so it's in your blind visual field that this is happening where you're not supposed to be able to see anything at all. 
But what I want you to do is just to guess what the direction of motion might have been, even though you can't see it. I want you to...